Well, thank you, John. Appreciate that. We, um, we're here because of grace. As you just said, it's grace and only grace that has brought us here. Thankful to have the kids here. Uh, not only the infants that we dedicated, but the younger kids. There's no Sunday school today, so every Sunday school teacher is here. Their classes are here. Uh, you know, in a very real way, uh, we, we built this building, not for us. You know, we're going to be gone before we know it. Uh, but these young ones. And I want a, a day like today, a time like this time here, to be so uh, memorable that, uh, that they'll tell their kids and their grandkids about the message they heard from Pastor John Miller and the, the Sunday dedication and the prayer time that we had. We had a prayer meeting this morning. We included every child in that prayer meeting. We prayed two by two. And I got to pray with uh, Jacob Iman, who was the youngest one in the room, and John Miller was the oldest one in the room, and everybody in between, we prayed together, and we bore one another's burdens to thus fulfill the law of Christ. And, and, uh, and I appreciate that. And uh, so many blessings he keeps pouring forth. Let me run through our slideshow real quickly. I remind myself now that you've had a 30-minute break instead of a 15-minute break. So my former departure time is... Uh, been adjusted accordingly. You know, the real crusher was in the years gone by was Joyce Mansell. Uh, because she was in her wheelchair and had the STS service that came uh, to the bus that came to pick her up and, and they were as punctual as clockwork and you wouldn't believe. So the, this big bus would come through and block all the parking and the Capital Metro guy would come into the back and try to wheel her out and sometimes we were singing when that took place, and sometimes I was still preaching when, when he came in. I realized that uh, now all things being done in an orderly manner means that includes the, the conclusion as well. And, uh, and I appreciate that. So we'll make that adjustment here as well. We still have 10 minutes and 4 seconds to, uh, to wrap up the slideshow. The real blessing, of course, is that uh, Pastor Miller already used all the scriptures I was going to show us today. <laughs> <laughs> which I am thankful for, the Holy Spirit. We didn't coordinate anything. I just left it with the Holy Spirit to coordinate it all. And he uh, did a marvelous job with that. I think of 1 Chronicles, where David uh, wanted to build the temple, was told he couldn't. And uh, so humble, unlike many of us, when being told what he could not do, he didn't pout, he didn't stomp his foot, he didn't grumble, he didn't uh, take his toys and go home. <coughs> He, uh, he worshiped and he praised God that his son would build the temple. And so then what does he do? He says, all right, I can't build the temple, but I can pay for it. And he stores away and he finances it. He builds, he gathers all the materials and he contracts with the king of, of uh, Lebanon. He does all this stuff to make, to pave the way. To pave the way. The truth is, David was the greater king. David was far greater king himself. Solomon gets a lot of attention because of the wisdom and, and whatever, and the wealth. And the temple, yes, he built the temple. And that's because God didn't let David build it first. David was a great king. And had David not been David, Solomon couldn't have built the temple. And I uh, couldn't help but think, I was reading through 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles, and, uh, and we're bringing Ralph down next week. I'm thankful for that. He's getting five or 23 teaching sessions of the conference. Nobody else is getting two. Everybody else is getting one and one only, but Ralph gets five of the 23 teaching conference uh, sessions next week. And, uh, and it should be. And I'm thankful for that. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Ralph. And, uh, and I'll testify that. I'll win the Bema seat. Ralph's the greater pastor. I just hope someday to rise to some level approaching the example he said. And we're doing what we're doing today because he did what he did. And it's a real blessing. You know, we uh, talk about dedication. We're about two weeks late, 12 days late. Friday the 13th, we had a 24-hour prayer vigil. 24 hours. We started at 6 o'clock. We ended at 6 o'clock. One day later. We prayed around the clock in different prayer teams and different um, lists. And uh, covered every family by name, every person by name, every husband, every wife, every single person, every parent, every child by name. And that was the sheet we used. In fact, if you want a copy, I can photocopy or email it to you.
and just run through it and pray. Say, today I'm going to pray for the next 10 families on my list. The next day I'm going to pray for the next 10 families on my list. I'm going to pray for the next 10 families on my list. Because remember, the church isn't the building. The church is the people. And we need to be praying for one another. It's probably too small to read, so I put it on there 10 by 10. <laughs> and just ask yourself, if there's a name there you don't recognize, say, why don't I know that name? How in the world can I bear their burdens if I don't even know what their burdens are? There's somebody on this page with uh, long-term unemployment. There's somebody on this page with a health issue. What about this page? Are there names here I don't recognize? A bunch of bowl winners. <laughs> that needs extra prayer. Are there names here I don't recognize? Are there names there that are going to change between now and the end of the year because they're taking a new name? Maybe I should be praying for that. In any event, the uh, church is not the building. And so I'm going too fast. Long, long time ago, let me tell you a story. This was an email I received on May 14, 2004. Um, because there was a building I drove past and it had a for sale sign. And I just was kind of curious what the price tag was. And 31,000 square feet seemed like a big space. And this is right across from Highland Mall. It's, uh, well, it used to be something else. And uh, we'd go in there and get paper for the photocopier and other supplies and stuff. Now it's called Expedex. It used to have a different name. But anyway, 31,914 square feet. So I uh, sent him an email. He sent me a multi million dollar answer. And I said, okay, thanks. <laughs> Keep praying. But this day has been a long time coming. And uh, even before 2004, I used to, we, Gary and I would drive around just looking at for sale signs and thinking, hmm. What are we going to do here? We had another idea. Get the exact date. Uh, this would have been in the same 2004, 2005 time frame. We said, hey, you know what? If we can't build another uh, another location, we can pave the backyard of the parsonage, turn that into an education building, and we can pave part of the lawn there opposite Aggie Lane. We can put angled parking off of Aggie Lane, and we can add 20 parking spaces. And then we very well only 15 probably 13, and then we don't even have a backyard. So we're going to go from 22 to 35, and, and we haven't done a thing for the auditorium, haven't done a thing for the bathrooms, we haven't done a thing for um, a whole lot of other issues, but we could have 13 parking spaces. Paving that. And so we had an interim step. We, uh, we were never allowed to pave, um, but we, uh, we did move my family out of the parsonage there and did convert that to an education building, and that at least gave us classroom spaces. Uh, gave us breathing room for a period of time, but uh, again, did nothing for those 22 parking spaces and uh, caused us to park up and down the Crestview neighborhood. So we kept looking. By July of 2007, we added the potential for empty land. We said, let's just look for empty land, put a building on it, including one up the road on Death Saw next to an elementary school. We thought it was going to be something. And then out of the blue, in December of 07, an email from John Carnegie where he received a call from a man by the name of James Randall regarding our church building. A friend of Steve Anderson's found find out we might be selling, and, and that's what happened. So we, we met him, we started praying. We started, and as long as we were praying, we started looking at other places. We found a warehouse here, and I didn't even, some of these, some of the men knew about, and some of them didn't know about. I sent this email on January 17th, saying, okay, as long as we're dreaming again, I'll keep web browsing. We'll keep finding properties, different stuff. This is kind of a sad story. We could have turned that into a church. Now it's a... We have children in the room. I won't tell you about this. But it's a, it's a shameful establishment. 